Welcome back to The Rustic Wife, I'm Alana. I'm just out the backyard at the corner of our property and I am collecting wild grapes today. Um, they grow wild everywhere around here. They are in the um, tree lines and climbing up the fences and I love to gather them for juice and jelly. They're kind of small, much smaller than the Concord grapes, um, but they're, they're great and they're free <laughs> and they're not sprayed. So um, we usually gather these, pick them off the stem, and I'll put them in the freezer until I'm ready to um, extract the juice and, and do something with them a little bit later on. So I'm going to show you these grapes and um, I'll show you another berry that looks like grapes that is not and it's poisonous. So I will show you the difference between the two. Also, if you're foraging for anything, always, always make sure that you have properly identified it before you pick and eat anything. So here are the wild grapes. It's October, I think it's about October 16th. And most of the leaves have fallen off, but there are some, just a typical grape leaf. And you can see it's kind of got the, see the little dog tooth along the, the sides there. So like I said, a lot of them have fallen off. Here's some more here. Anyway, the grapes, they look like just a cluster of Concord grapes. They've got that purpley, bluish color with almost like a little white bloom on it. They're very small, small grapes. And that's them right there. We like to get them after it's kind of getting a little bit cooler because they can be quite tart. But once the cold weather hits, um, they, they get a little sweeter. The only problem is the birds, you have to, <laughs> you have to um, share with the birds too, which is good because they need to eat too. Also on the uh, grape vines, you'll see some little tendrils here. They're kind of dried up now. Let's see if I can find one that's not dry. Most of them are, have dried up, but they're a little tendril, just like a, a, um, on a Concord grape or any other type of grape. You can see, oh, here's some right here. Right there, it's, it's dried up now. You can see the vines now that the leaves have come off. You can see the vines here. And they're very woody, but a lot, lots and lots and lots of grapes. So if you gather these and take the, extract the juice, it makes fabulous jelly and also great juice to drink all winter long. Next I'll show you a berry that is poisonous and you don't want to mistake it for the wild grapes. Um, sometimes they grow with the wild grapes and they look very similar, but I'm going to show you the difference. So here we go. This is called Virginia creeper and these berries are poisonous. So I'm going to show you some differences here. They sometimes grow in amongst the wild grapes. They will grow together. They look very similar, but they are very different. So I will show you the vines first. You can see the, the, the vine here. It's almost like wood, like a, a, a smooth barked twig. The grapevine is not really smooth. You can actually kind of flake off some of the bark on the vine. So that's one difference. Um, the berries, you can see the berries are on red stems. The berries do look similar. They have the, the same color with that little bit of a white bloom on it too. It looks almost kind of like a powder. It's, it's not really a powder, but it, it, it looks very similar to the grape. But one big difference is the red stem. Also how they grow, you'll notice the grape are in clusters and tight clusters. These are not. So again, you can see them growing all along the fence, very similar to grapes, but that is a big difference. Now the leaves have all fallen off. Otherwise I could show you a leaf, but a leaf will have um, five leaves coming from the center. So I'll see if I can get a picture of one from the internet to show you. So there'll be five leaves, very, very different than the grape leaves. I'll see if I can get a picture for comparison, but these are the Virginia creepers. Poisonous, do not consume these or mistake them for grapes. And we're back to the grapes. I'm gonna show you the bark up close to the grapevine. 
it's not a smooth bark really, you can actually flake the bark off. Let's see the difference there. Oh, there's a little bird's nest. There was one on the Virginia creepers too. Another berry that you might find growing in around um, the wild grapes is buckthorn. That is a, a, like a shrub that grows in a lot of tree lines here in Ontario. This is a buckthorn tree or a bush. So here's the bark right here and you can see the thorn on it right there. These are the leaves. So nothing, nothing like a grape leaf. And I'll show you the berries. The berries are also purple, dark purple, almost black. They are the berries right there. So again, they look nothing like how a grape grows. The leaves are different, the bark is different. It is not a climber, it's more of a shrub. But these are growing right here by our grapes. So very, very close. You can see the grapes and you can see these buckthorn berries right here. So just be mindful, um, the roots and the bark of the buckthorn are poisonous and if you were to eat the berries they cause cramping and diarrhea and ain't nobody got time for diarrhea and cramping so do not eat those. Grapes and buckthorn berries, completely, completely different. So you can see right here I actually have um, a grapevine growing through a buckthorn bush. So these berries are actually growing right beside each other. So you have to be careful of what you're picking. There's the buckthorn right there. And these are the grapes. So do not pick those. Pick those. So here's my basket so far of wild grapes. I have to go in to make supper, but I'm going to take these. This is going to take me a while. I'm going to take those and pluck each one off the stem, and then I will put them in the freezer. But I will be collecting more. Tomorrow I'll be heading out again to pick some more wild grapes. I've got quite a few places around the countryside that I know they are total jackpot spots, and I'll be going back to get some of those. And I also am going to be collecting some wild apples tomorrow too. I'm going to be making some juice and jelly out of those and we'll have those for the winter. All right, we got our wild grapes and now we are looking for some wild apples and you can see here over my shoulder we found a nice tree and we collect these for applesauce and juice and jelly. So we have our baskets ready and we fix them. These ones will make nice jelly. They've got a nice color to them. So make a nice rosy jelly. I'm going to try one. They're always better when there's been a um, little cold snap. They'll make really nice jelly. Technically these aren't wild apples. They are just feral apples. The uh, Europeans when they came over here they brought apple seeds with them and now these just I guess they get carried away by birds, the seeds do, and they grow everywhere, wild on the side of the road and in tree lines.
We're back from day two of grape picking and we already have quite a few of them picked off the stem and put into bags and put in the freezer. But I thought I'd show you this batch that I'm doing here. I've got them soaking in the sink and I'm going to be picking the each little grape off the stems and putting them in, in um, Ziploc bags and they will go in the freezer too. So here these are the ones that are soaking in the sink right now. I just want to, if there's any dust on them or any little fruit flies or anything, I just want to get those off before I pick them off the stem. So this is a messy job. Um, tedious and messy. So you want to make sure you have um, old clothes on because these will stain. Your fingers will be stained and I'm going to be putting these just in a, an old enamel bowl. You want to pick a bowl that you don't care if it stains purple. I don't that one doesn't matter, it's just a work bowl, so I just use that one. If you leave the stems on, uh, I've done that before, and you can taste the stem in the grapes. So you don't want to cut corners and leave the stems on, because that would be a lot of work picking them and making the juice or jelly for it to taste like stems. I also use tea towels that you don't care if they're stained either because this is this is really messy. Sometimes we do it outside and then rinse the grapes off but I thought I'd just do it in here. It's kind of windy today. And these grapes, the birds absolutely love them. We call them the purple poopers. And if you're hanging clothes on the line and a bird goes by and poops on it, <laughs> your clothes will be stained purple. So there's some there's an upside to these grapes and a downside. So there's the grapes all picked off the stem. I've got the stems over there and I'll just put those in the compost pile. And these I'm just going to put them in Ziploc bags and put them in the freezer until I have time to make the juice and jelly. I got three bags of these wild grapes to go in the freezer and I will go back and pick some more. Anyway, thanks for coming along today and joining me on my grape picking adventure. And if you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing and I'll see you again next time.